Today we learn how to add floating text in game with Unity. This effect is really useful for showing enemy damage, hits or combos or basically anything you want. All you need is a trigger point which usually is something like enemy hit or enemy damage and a prefab that you can instantiate. We can put a text mesh on this prefab with the text we want and maybe animate it a bit. So let's start with our test project here. This is the Unity Survival Shooter sample project. It's a fun little game where you shoot zombies. We will add our floating text in this game to show enemies health when they get shot. The first thing that we need is the floating text prefab. So let's create a game object and call it floating text. Reset the position and add a text mesh component to it. Change the text value to something and maybe scale it down a bit and change the anchors and fonts. Okay, now we can drag it down to create a prefab out of this. Next thing we need is to figure out a trigger point for this text. So in this game, all the enemies have this enemy health component. What we can do here is to instantiate this floating text when the enemy takes damage. So in the enemy health script, let's first reference our floating text prefab as a variable. And then we can call some method like show floating text inside the take damage method. Let's define the method below. And maybe we should only show the floating text if the prefab is assigned, otherwise we should just ignore this. Inside this method, we can instantiate the prefab at the same position as the enemy with no rotation and let's make it a child of the enemy game object. Now in the inspector, let's drop this floating text prefab on all our enemies. When we hit play, we can see that the prefab is instantiating properly. You can also see the benefit of using a 3D text mesh here as the text can easily move around in the game space. But the text remains even when the enemy is destroyed. So let's add a new script on our prefab called floating text. Uh, let's keep all our files together. And in this component, we will create a public variable called destroy time. And right in the start, we can call the destroy on this game object with this time. This will automatically destroy the game object after some time. We should also change the text of this prefab to match the current health of the enemy. So in the show floating text method on our enemy health script, let's get our text mesh component and change its text to the current health of the enemy. Let's hit play. Now the text shows current health value and also destroys after a while. But it kind of looks weird because the texts are all in the same place. So let's add some animation to these texts to move them around. Let's drag our floating text prefab in the inspector and add an animator component to it. Open the animation window and hit create to create a new animation clip. Move it to the proper folders. Now to animate this, we can use Unity's recording feature. So while the game object is selected, hit the record button at the top left. Then move ahead a few frames and let's scale the text down to maybe 0.1 or let's make it 0.01. This will make the text scale down with time. Let's decrease the animation time a bit. This looks fine for now. Also, make sure to remove the loop time from animation because we only want to animate it once. Our animation is done now, so now we can remove the game object from the scene. Now, we can see that the floating text looks much better as it scales down with time. But I don't like how it's showing up at the enemy's feet, so to fix that, we can add some offset on our floating text. Let's go to our floating text script and add a new vector3 variable called offset and give it some default values. In the start method, we can add this offset to a local position. With this set, you can see that the text is shown above the enemy, which looks better. One more thing I notice is that we are showing the text even when it's zero. So let's change the condition and only show the text if the current health is greater than zero. But still the text looks boring because it's all white. So we should change the color to match the enemy color. Let's drag our enemies in the scene for a moment and use their colors as our text mesh color. First, let's duplicate our floating text prefab and make three copies of it. Change each one's color to the corresponding enemy. I'm using the color picker here to pick the correct colors. Let's also rename the prefabs based on their color. With this done, we can remove the enemies from the scene. Now for each enemy, we can use the matching floating text. Elephant gets the yellow, magenta goes for the bear and bunny gets the cyan. Let's test the game out. Okay, so the enemies now get their matching color, which looks nicer. But even now the text always appears at the same place and there should be some variation in its position. Uh, let's add a new vector variable in floating text script called randomize intensity. Give it some default values. 
So when this text is loaded, we will add some randomized vector to our local position. This random vector just varies between our randomized intensity variable. When we hit play, we can see that there is some variation in the position, which looks better. Okay, so the cool part of this effect is over. Now we can just play around and create some more effects to use. Let's drop our prefab in the scene once more. And I think our animation needs some more pop. So rather than the linear scale, let's first increase the scale for a few frames and then reduce it. This will add a bit of a bouncy effect to the text. And I think the animation is too slow, so reduce the time a bit. And again, you can experiment with these things as much as you want. Add some crazy effects in the animation. Uh, just as an example, I will show you one more effect. Let's first rename our animations properly. Let's duplicate these and call the new ones scale down and slide up. So for the new animation controller, we will use the new animation clip. Let's drag the prefab in the scene and we will experiment with the position now. So with time, the text will move down slightly and maybe then move up. Let's use this new effect on our cyan floating text. And you can see that the zombie bunny has this sliding up effect while our zombie bear uses scale down effect. There is still a lot we can improve in this, uh, like using some kind of object pooling for the text as it's not really optimal to instantiate so many game objects. But I'll leave that to you. Just experiment with these things, create some fancy effects and just have some fun. Thank you for watching Indie Nuggets. I'll see you next time. Cheers.